this crew, Crosby Industrial Services crew, I guess in some ways came, came together by fluke. There's been very, I guess, few crews, you know, in the history of this regatta that have gone down and actually set a course record. And as I've told the boys in the beginning, these things just, it just doesn't happen. It takes a lot of planning, a lot of work, and the only way it's going to happen is you have to put in the work. The difference, you know, is certainly the, uh, the age, you know, you got a bunch, you got three guys, you know, relatively young, really, and you got three, three seasoned, uh, two really seasoned uh, rowers, and it just, it really just how they gelled together was uh, something I, was unexpected to me, and uh, it just worked out great. Well, I guess this year, you know, what the boys accomplished, you know, while Regatta Day was the end of a journey and they proved to people what they could do. But I guess what you got to look at is the hard work that got them to where they finished. Uh, along the way, I look at uh, all the pieces on the ergometer they did. I look at the nights that we came here to this room and uh, when we went to leave, had to shove the door with the snow behind it pushing fellas who were stuck, you know, with their cars and who came here to work out and gave uh, that type of a, an effort. And, and when you look back at it, you know, the, the end was great and is what they should have got. And I think they, sh they deserve a lot more. But I think they really got to look at how much time and effort went in to getting them to where they finished to today. Sometimes I'd be sitting down here, myself and Mike, and you'd You'd be looking at the guys and how hard they were working. And, you know, six of them, they're just beating away on their ergometer. And you say to yourself sometimes, you know, people just don't realize the work that goes into this, right? They're almost not magical moments, but they're, they're moments that really puts in perspective, I guess, how they got to where they got. It just didn't happen. I mean, it was these moments, these times where they're pushing themselves to their limit that brought them to a level that allowed them to roll the time that they rolled. One of the biggest things that stick out for me uh, with this particular crew, I've been fortunate to be with a good few crews, but this crew is their dedication and never once, you know, I've seen guys come here sick with the flu and everything else and get on their gambler and give it everything they had and never once get off. You never once say, no, I can't do it tonight. No matter what it was, they got through it. And if it was an hour or an hour and a half, that's what they did. And that's what it took. Sometimes you look at, you know, champions are people who push beyond, you know? And in stake five, the overwhelming favorites, the potential to break a record, Crosby Industrial Services, Mark Hayward steering, Brent Hickey, Adam Kavanaugh, Eddie Williams, Daryl Ryan, Ronnie Witten and James Cadigan, the defending oarsmen of the day from last year's regatta. And they are off. Clean start for all five crews. Hallmark of the strength of Crosby Industrial has been their starship on the you know, We came down that morning, you know, we knew we, we could beat the course record. We knew we could. We had done it. And uh, I remember coming down the pond that morning and there was a uh, northeasterly wind and it wasn't in our favor. We were getting the worst of it because we were over on five. But you know, I was nervous, like, are they going to be able to make it up coming back? And uh, I knew then coming back, they were going to have, at least they wouldn't have the wind against them. Now they would have the wind to help them come back a bit. And um, I remember being at the ladies' kegs coming through and I was counting down the seconds. And they were about 849, 850, somewhere around, or I'm sorry, 649, 650. And I knew they were in striking distance. And it wasn't until about the last 10, 15 seconds from my vantage point, I felt they were gonna do it. And that was, that was, that was uh, just spectacular for me. That was, that set the moment gathered around the boathouse. Eyeballs have turned away from the race. Now concentrated on the clock. There we Woo! go, ladies and gentlemen. Every 
everybody of every stripe who has ever seen or watched a rowing race here at Kitty Bitty knows that what has just gone on here is, of course, has its place in history now. What an effort from Crosby Industrial. Wow. Jimmy, can you believe it here? We thought the pond was worth it. We thought they had a chance at it, and lo and behold, they did And didn't. they obviously realize what they've done based yeah. on what's happening up there at the yeah, top of the pond. Absolutely, yeah. That is fabulous. Yeah. They're experiencing what we all dream yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> I remember leading up to the regatta. And uh, Mark was, uh, not this year, but uh, last year, it was Mark's first year steering. And it was a Sunday morning, I went up to Mark's house, bottom down to the pond, where I wanted to make sure Mark had his markers, and uh, you know, we go to the top of the pond, we went to the bottom of the pond, you know, where's your marker coming back, where's your marker going down, you know, the angle that we're going to cut on. And then that evening, uh, the following Monday evening, um, we were down to the pond, and I was wanting to go up to the top of the pond again with Mark. <laughs> and I was, I was really lean now about you know the course he had to take, and I didn't want to give up a second. <laughs> Mark turned at me and looked at me and said, "Bert Hickey, I only got one more evening with you, and it can't come soon enough." <laughs> I'll always remember. Adam Kavanagh coming on board, and he was on the mainland somewhere uh, going to school or on a work term, and the boys couldn't put a face to two of the guys because they, they didn't know him, right? And they were calling him, no face. They had a picture, but it was no face, you know? And they, they sort of, every night, uh, when is he getting back? When is he getting back? And finally, when Adam came back, you know, it was just like everything started to come together. I really got a good grasp of the level of commitment uh, from this crew uh, was not this year but last year and I didn't really know how committed they were I didn't really know all the boys as well as I do know them now obviously but I remember a it was a stormy evening uh, it was too much snow down for us to run outside so myself and Brent and Eddie decided we we're going to run uh, Atlantic Place in the garage on our way to Atlantic Place, we were driving down uh, by uh, Pleasantville when we seen this, what I'd call a dominal snowman running <laughs> through the snow, full of snow, and who was it but Ronnie Whitten? And that really sent home a message to me that these guys are committed, they want to win. One of the things that I really preached to the guys this year, and, and I guess last year, was, you know, when we, when we start, first got on the water and, you know, we first started working on some speed work, and you, up to that point, you know, I didn't really know where the guys were, or really how fast they were. And when I started to see that, you know, some of the times they were doing, and, you know, it quickly became evident to me last year they're fast. This is a fast crew. The Tuesday night before the regatta, we were at 8.49. And I just didn't want to settle for going down uh, and, you know, just sticking with 8.54 and winning the championship. I knew there were seconds there that we could have. And uh, before the championship race, we went through our, our regular routine, came down here and have a workout. And I wore myself up to try and give those guys the most passionate speech or pep talk that I could ever give them because I didn't want to leave one second on the table. And I wanted to get the message across to them, like, you know, you got to seize the moment. When you line up or you get a day, this is your moment, this is your opportunity. Seize the moment, take full advantage of it, you know, don't don't leave anything on the table. Don't leave any stone on time. Let's, let's go for broke right now.
there's a pretty good crowd here for championship race night as well. This side of the pond is traditionally pretty full, and it is again tonight. And everyone here is not only hoping for a fast, competitive, safe race, but certainly quietly, no matter who you're cheering for. It'd be nice to see history set again tonight and another record time laid down. And they're off. The Jerry Angel Molson Men's Championship race is underway. Take this. We, we always sort of uh, looked at Outer Cove and the 913, and people thought they were giants, you know? And we did it in 82, and now those guys come along. But, you know, no one believed that they could do it. You know, it was only the people that was close to them. Like, we were there every day. We seen everything that went on. And you gotta be a dreamer, you know? <laughs> For own, you gotta be a dreamer. And sometimes if you do the work, you can own the dream. And you look at them this year, and we were here in the morning, six o'clock, the regatta was canceled, then we had to wait, then we had to come back again and do a second warm up. But you had that feeling, you know, the feeling was there that something uh, magical was going to happen. And those guys came down there, you know, they were ready, they were prepared, and when they, when they got in the boat, when they shoved off in the wharf and warmed up, there wasn't a, 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 I wouldn't say a, a thought in my head. I was so nervous for them just to make sure that every stroke they made was good that day. But I gotta say, when they hit the boathouse on the way back, the record was no more. You could tell. You didn't have to look at the clock on the boathouse. You didn't have to look at anyone with a watch. You could feel it in the crowd because you hear that. Makes two. Check this out. Crosby Industrial on their way to maybe setting another regatta race record. This is going to be close, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, got it. And done <laughs> in fine fashion. Holy Toledo. A proud day for Rogers Television to be part of history making. No matter what the official time runs in, it's the first time in the long story tradition of the Royal St. John's Regatta where a men's crew has broken the elusive nine minute barrier twice in the same day, very likely has broken the record twice in the same day. When we get... I choke up a little every time I, I think of things like this, but it's been part of her so long and seeing fellas do it. And, I, you know, I can't say enough about this crew. Guys said, this past two years has been a real pleasure for me, just being around you guys, uh, watching you develop from where you started uh, to where you finished. Uh, Mark, Brent, uh, Ronnie, Eddie, James, Daryl, it's, it's been a real pleasure. And fellas, records are made to be broken, we've all know that, and we all know where we came from, but I gotta tell you, from the heart, it was a real pleasure for me to be part of it, and I'm so happy to see that uh, you're finally getting some recognition for the hard work you did. So boys, you know, I pushed you guys hard the last two years. Um, there was lots of times that I looked in your faces when you were pushing yourselves on the ergometers, in the boat, and where I've been there myself, I knew how, I knew what you were going through, and I could feel the pain. And it was, it's harder for me to look at you guys feeling the pain than feeling it myself. But you know what, it was all worth it. You accomplished more than you ever set out for. And congratulations.
And this award goes to Crosby Industrial Services, who rode in a time in the championship race of 